So in the last video, we learned two techniques for getting a variable by itself. To get rid of a term, we add its opposite to both sides of the equation, and to get rid of a coefficient, we multiply both sides by its reciprocal. Now we're going to combine the, these two steps to solve what's called a two-step equation. A two-step equation is in this form. In order to get x by itself, we need to get rid of this coefficient and also get rid of this term. But we get to choose in what order we're going to do that. The choice that we're going to make is to first get rid of that term. So I'm going to first get rid of the constant term. And here I'm adding 5 to get rid of it. I'm going to add negative 5 on both sides. Or you can think of it that as just subtracting 5. The 5 and the negative 5, of course, cancel out. On the left, we're left with just 2x. On the right, 17 minus 5, that's just 12. Okay, now second, I want to get rid of the coefficient. To do that, I need to multiply by the reciprocal of 2, that is, a half. So I'll have a half times 2x equals a half times 12. The half and the 2 will cancel out, and I'll be left with just x. A half times 12, that's the same as 12 divided by 2. That's just 6. So first I got rid of the constant term, then I got rid of the coefficient. Let's make sure that actually worked. Plugging in 6 for x, I get 2 times 6 plus 5. That's 12 plus 5, which really is 17. Now I said we chose that order. You might be wondering, why do we want to choose that order rather than the other way around? Why do we want to get rid of the constant term first and then get rid of the coefficient? Well, I couldn't choose the other order. We couldn't choose to first get rid of the coefficient. In order to do that, I need to multiply both sides by a half. But notice what happens when I do that. I need the distributive property. Instead of just saying that the 1 half and the 2 cancel out, I'm going to need to distribute the 1 half across these parentheses. So I'll have 1 half times 2x, but also 1 half times 5. And over on the right, 1 half times 17 well, that's 17 halves. Okay, the 1 half and the 2 do still cancel out. But now I have a half times 5. So I'm going to have 5 halves equals 17 halves. Okay. But I can still get rid of the constant now. Of course, now I have to subtract 5 halves from both sides, because that's the constant term that I now see. And I'm left with x equals 17 halves minus 5 halves is 12 halves. So I still get x equals 6. So the good news is that's the same answer. It's still right. The bad news is, that was a lot more work. So the answer to why do we get rid of the constant first is that multiplying both sides is harder if one side has two terms. 
So we choose to get rid of the constant first because that's the easiest way to do the problem. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. I'm going to show you an example with some kind of unpleasant numbers, and then I'm going to show you an example where something slightly weird happens. Let's say we wanted to solve this equation. 7 thirds x minus 11 sixths equals 21 halves. Now some math textbooks will tell you to go to a huge amount of effort to make the fractions in this problem go away. I'm not going to tell you to do that. I'm going to tell you these fractions are perfectly good numbers. Use your calculator if you need to. First I'm going to get rid of the constant. I notice I have a negative 11 sixths, so I'm going to add a positive 11 sixths. Over here, negative 11 sixths and positive 11 sixths cancel out. And I'm just left with 7 thirds x. On the right, I think that looks like a job for my calculator. I'm just going to take my 21 halves plus 11 sixths and give my answer as a fraction. So that's 37 thirds. Okay, and now I get rid of the coefficient. I think getting rid of the coefficient is actually a little bit easier when it's a fraction, because taking the reciprocal of a fraction is really easy. The reciprocal of 7 thirds is, of course, 3 sevenths. So I have 3 sevenths times 7 thirds x equals 3 sevenths times 37 thirds. Now, the 3 sevenths and 7 thirds cancel out, and we're just left with x on the left. Maybe you can see exactly what you get on the right, but if not, you can use your calculator again we have 37 thirds times 3 sevenths. And again, we're going to want this as a fraction. Oh, that's just 37 sevenths. And we're done. We should probably check our answer, though. If we take 7 thirds times 37 sevenths minus 11 sixths. What do we get? Well, we have 7 thirds times 37 sevenths minus 11 sixths. 10.5, that's looking promising. Make it into a fraction. It really is 21 halves. Notice, we can just go ahead and solve this equation with the fractions in it and just use our calculator if we want to for the fraction arithmetic. Okay, let's see an example where there's something a little bit weird. Let's say we have an equation where we're subtracting the variable. It turns out that the easiest way to handle this is to rewrite this as plus the negative. Right, remember, 127 minus x means 127 plus negative x. And now it's a little bit easier to see what to do. What should we do? Well, we want to get rid of the constant, which is this 127. We have a positive 127. To get rid of it, we want a negative 127. On the left, we're just left with negative x. 
On the right, this looks like a job for my calculator. I have 98 minus 127 is negative 29. Okay, now I'm not quite done here, right? Remember, I understand this negative sign in front of the x as a coefficient negative 1. So I need to get rid of the negative 1. To do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And I'm left with, on the left, just x, and on the right, positive 29. Did that really work? Let's check. 127 minus 29. 127 minus 29. That really is 98, as we hoped it would be. So what's the new thing that we see here? If we're subtracting the variable term, remember that that just means adding the opposite. 